come the found of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Screams of mercy never ceasing. God for songs of love that's praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain, fix the pony, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my neighbor, neighbor, hither by thy help and call. And I hope by thy good pleasure, save me to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace a greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart to take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. We continue with uh, the meditation on Psalm 23. Last Sunday we talked about the Lord is my shepherd. We all need a shepherd to guide us. We are like sheep that are lost. And it is, uh, has been mentioned in the scripture several times in many places that compare people to the sheep and God as the shepherd. And I gave you some of the reasons for that because the sheep are directionless. They are many times dumb and um, they are very afraid. They are uh, afraid, kind of, they only know how to run, and most of the time they run into the danger and not to safety. And also they follow a leader blindly and get into trouble, and there's no leader for them. They follow somebody in front of them. Uh, but many other animals have uh, selected leaders in their, you know, elephants and lions and other, uh, they have leaders in the clans, in the, in the, in the groups that they live together. But, uh, Sheep has nobody to lead them, so they need a, a, a guardian, which is the shepherd, who loves the sheep and cares for the sheep and feeds the sheep and, care, care and take care of their safety as well. So that is why we need a shepherd. As people living in this world, sometimes we all think that we know and we think that we are making the right decisions and how many times we failed ourselves thinking that way, you know, thinking that we did the right choice and right decisions happens every day in my life, uh, one time or other, that even small decisions that I thought was good, that be hanging a picture I thought would stay there, fall down in two hours. <laughs> so that, you know, things like that, it make me laugh. But those are simple, even simple things that we take for granted may not work out because we are very uh, weak in our thinking, in our physical bodies in our life in this world. We are very vulnerable, like a sheep. We need, the need for a shepherd is very much uh, in our lives. We need a shepherd very much in our lives to guide us, otherwise we will get lost. And the second sentence or the second phrase of that first verse is that I shall not want. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's what I wanted to uh, preach on today. What is the want that we have? Uh, if I ask any of you, what do you want? Do you have an answer? <laughs> I mean, you can probably come up with, if you are sick today, you said, I need healing today, right? Tomorrow, then what? You get healing. You something else, right? And many of us, or many of the people in the world think that if, uh, if you have a lot of money, everything else will follow. But you and I know that that's not the tr truth. It's a lot of things that you cannot buy with money. And we have seen millionaires, you know, living in the streets. I don't want to go through the stories of many, many millionaires in this country. And, and some, you know, they, 
ended up living in the streets with all the money in the bank, with losing their mind. And a lot of those billionaires and millionaires have lost their relationship with families and friends, and they're finding themselves depressed with nobody to turn to. So money is not everything, and, and I don't have to preach on it. You all know that. Um, sometimes we think that power will bring us happiness, and you know that that's not the case either. When power comes and, you know, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Corruption goes with power. We are not happy with our leaders, our, uh, our relatives, our spouse, our children, or things that we already have. And um, when we have a house that we have been living in for some time, we find ourselves thinking that we need a bigger house or a better house. And we have been dri driving a car, and uh, you see some of the new models coming out that, you know, sends us the lanes. And I, my car doesn't have that. None of my cars have that. But I drove in one of them with a, as a passenger. And it actually senses the lanes in the street. When it, you swerve away, it starts vibrating. I said, wow, I wish I could have that. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been driving the others without it for years and no problem. When I saw this, I said, well, it is good to have that. And nothing wrong with these desires in our lives, but our wants keep growing or changing every day. And if uh, you, somebody asks you what you want, probably you won't, may not know what you want. You don't know what you want, <laughs> you know. So that is the problem. As Mark Twain said it one time, that half of the time I don't know what I'm doing, half of the time I don't know what I want. That's how life is. We don't know what we are doing, and we don't know what we want. So the, the writer of this psalm, which is supposed to be David, King David, saying that the Lord is my shepherd, and he takes care of everything like a shepherd taking care of the sheep, and if we follow him like a sheep, we will never have anything to be wanting. So I, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. That is what the actual meaning of that text is. So not lacking or wanting anything speaks to the sufficiency of God. God is all we need. He will provide for us no matter what the circumstances are. And we can lean on him. And if we lose our job or get sick or we have a problem in our relationship or if our finances go away or even if we are anxious or suffering through some of the issues with the, that's happening around us, the pandemic or the issues with our economy, turn to God and we can ultimately find peace in Him regardless of what kind of problems that we are going through. That is the great thing about the believers that unlike others, we have a place that we can go to when we find ourselves lost and we don't have peace in our lives. Take the scripture and start reading it. And go to God in prayer who has promised that he will be always there listening to our prayers. And that is the uh, trust that we have in God. Many times in this country, particularly in, in, in America, self-sufficiency and individualism is very much promoted. Right from the beginning when you are a kid, you know, you are promoted with a very good, very good thing. Um, but at the same time, self-sufficiency is not um, um, a very good thing when it, you take it to the extreme. For example, um, many of the companies that I work for, you work hard to, to prove yourselves, saying that I have the ability to do this and more. And the more you do, the more you have to prove yourself, right? Yeah. Because there is no end to the, 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 the requirement that they put on you. If you are a good performer, that's not enough. You, have, you can do better, right? That is what performance review is all about. Um, or we work hard and impress our bosses. We think that we can succeed in our work. We will get promoted, receive bonuses, and our stock options will be valuable. Very good um, incentives. Um, but uh, self-sufficiency can also deceive us into thinking that we are in control. And so that's what happens when you climbing the corporate ladder. You think you can do this, you can go to the next level, and it's all about yourself and you're in control. But boom, all of a sudden something happens to the company or something happens to the economy, they lay off people, and lo and behold, I mean, I, probably many of you have gone through that. I have gone through that several times. And they call you and say, hey, your job is, you know, done for this, this company as of today, or sometimes they give you two weeks whatever it is, if they are a uh, good company, sometimes the same day. 
And when ha that happens, we lose our job, our income goes away, and what happens to our, our self-control that we were trying to achieve to climb the corporate ladder? Everything goes down. And it pulls you down, it pulls your spirits down many times, but that is when we know that there is a shepherd who is with us. And job is not everything. The care of the shepherd is more important than our jobs, our relationships, or our even church. You know, church is not the place. Church, when church becomes our shepherd, we get lost also. I mean, believe me. <laughs> because the church is not the place to be gathered. Church is a place to gather, to follow the shepherd. If the shepherd is not guiding us, then that is not the church you want to be. The shepherd should be the, the guiding factor of the church as well. So we are not in control. Um, in, in, in many times, as, as you know that we lose a relationship or we come to grip with the fact that somebody uh, died in our families, our dear ones, not only we grieve and our, our loss, but we are also getting anxious about our own mortality. What is our next step? We went and visited some people in the uh, nursing homes and shut in places this past week. And every time I come out of there and I tell my wife, you know, we are heading to that place too one <laughs> day. We have to be aware of that. And, uh, it, you know, it is, it is a comforting thing for us to go and pray with them. And uh, many of them are very grateful. If you have time to do, please do that. And, and if you need somebody to go, a name or something, I will give you names. Bob is one of them. And I have several people that need somebody to talk to. So all of, overall, we, we know that we are not in control. And, but if we have God as our shepherd and put him at the center of our lives, rather than ourselves, we can live a life without wants. Living a full life, a life without want, means having God in our life, in fact, at the center of our life. With God at the center of our lives, we become other-centered, outbound, not inbound. What can I do? What can I get? What can I earn? Where can I get from this place? Rather than thinking about that, when God becomes our center, God, our, our, our focus changes to others. How can I help somebody? How can I lift somebody up? How can I help somebody with my blessings that I receive? We become caring, we become considerate and humble, and not, above all, not being arrogant. That's what happens when you are rich or powerful. You know, most of the time you see that arrogance comes. But when God is in our center, we become loving for others, to care for others and be compassionate and not be arrogant. And money or wealth is like seawater. That's what one of the philosophers that are saying that it, uh, it is like seawater. Uh, you are drowning and you drink that seawater. The more you drink, the more thirsty you get. But that, that is like money. You don't want that. All these things we try to fill in our lives are not necessarily bad things, but when they become the end goals, the reason for our being, we end up being discontent because those things were never meant to fulfill us. Many of the people that I have talked to that are discontent find themselves in financial trouble and relationship trouble. It starts with how they are leading their lives and living above their means. And I have seen that relationship problems and uh, um, other issues that, that they have uh, in their lives are about living above their means. And uh, Philippians, we read that Paul that saying that, I know uh, I can speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know that how to live in poverty and in prosperity. In any circumstance that I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need, I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me. So living above our means is not a good idea. Having a lot of, a lot of debt and uh, thinking that you can make it up as you go. As you sink more and more in debt, I have seen people sink more and not that they can get out of it. So, uh, so if God is our, in our center, we know how to manage our finances and how to live within the means and the situations that God has given us to be content and be happy where we are. If we need to shut, cut down some expenses, you know, we will be happy to do that and not be grumbling. Like a budget and expense thing. You know, set apart the giving and the donations like um, the, the financial uh, talk show host um, um, that is, comes on the radio. He, he suggests that every time you do a 
budget analysis always set apart what you want to give to others first and then do the living and, and the budget so that that will tell you if you are god centered or not you know take the money that you think that you can spend for something else other than yourself and church if you are planning to give to church or any missions or in, for some others helping some others take that money out and set apart and then use the other money as your own because the other doesn't belong to you uh we will never get there if you don't do that because you cannot find enough money to spend on your expenses so as we people of god as we say that god the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want when god becomes the sender we become oriented towards others and caring towards others there's a lot of verses that i can bring in like proverb says that he who trust in riches will fall but the righteous shall flourish as the green leaf and um jesus himself said in that in the parable about the seed the word of god that fell among the thorns and they are choked by the lies worries and riches and plush ecclesiastes we say that whoever loves money never has enough um, one of the prayers that uh, the proverbs writer makes uh, is very interesting he said two things i ask you o lord do not refuse me before i die on thee he is saying that give me neither poverty nor riches but give me only my daily bread and the second thing so do not bless me with too much so that i may say that who is the lord or i may become poor that that i will steal so those are the two prayers that the proverbs uh, writer says in in proverbs 30 verses 7 and 9 do not make me so poor that i have to steal and do not make me so rich that i become arrogant give me my daily bread that's what the prayer of that uh, writer is so recognizing life is that life is a gift on the blessing in this world to bless others when we realize that the world is bigger than ourselves and there are people who are in need more than us when i think about my need i and god wants us to think about others needs are there somebody who can who is in worse situation than i am we will learn to think of life that is greater than ourselves to be content means caring and compassionate to others respecting and meeting the needs of the suffering people and also giving our time money talents and resources to bless others bless the church a lot of people think that um, we should not talk about money or wealth or anything in the church but where else can we talk because church is the body the body of christ it is a personal thing to give it is a personal thing between you and god but the body of christ is you and me so if we are together giving to god then this is also a place that we have to talk about that and uh, god wants the body of christ to be faithful in all the things that god has given us in our money in our time in our witness whatever opportunity that is god has given us and remember jesus was watching a poor widow who was putting two coins in the treasury of the church and she um, and looking at that he said she has given everything that she had and that is the kind of living that god is expecting <coughs> from us to do sacrificial living or uh, giving of our time talents and wealth is what god expects from us so as we consider that i shall not want or if god is our shepherd we will not be wanting for anything because he is the one who cares for us trusting in god is the answer to a content life we read that the fear of the lord leads to life in proverbs the one who rests content is untouched by trouble if they if he believes in god those who seek the lord will lack no good thing this is what god wants us to do to trust in his care completely as a shepherd a sheep follows the shepherd and he will take care of our needs and he has done in the past and he will continue to do that in the future george muller was a missionary that uh, took care of uh, many thousands of children during the economic downturn in um, england in the early 1900s and he had one orphanage had close to 2000 children and it was completely run by donation from others and believing and trusting in god he continued to do that ministry for years and uh, one night as muller was informed that the supply of food was gone uh, in one of the houses there were that children the next morning he didn't know where the food comes from but as they do regularly they gathered all the children for breakfast in the dining hall they knew there was no food and they knew they could not have uh, enough food to serve and um, they 
started putting a bowl and a plate and a glass in front of each of the 800 children that they had in that separate house. There was nothing coming and they waited. And then Muller asked the children to bow their heads as he prayed. His words include a father, we thank you for what you are going to give us to eat. They waited for another few minutes. All of a sudden, in about 30 minutes, a baker came and knocking at the door. And um, when they opened the door, he said, I had a dream last night. And after that dream, I could not sleep. So I felt that you didn't have enough bread for the children. So I got up in the morning at 2 o'clock and baked some uh, fresh bread for you, brought that bread inside. story that you can read in his life story, George Muller. And later that day, and they didn't have milk, and the cup st stood there after they ate their bread, bread. Later that day, another miracle happened. Uh, there was a milk truck that was driving by, broke down right in front of their um, orphanage. And they could not do anything with the milk, and they knew that it's going to take hours to get out of that place to fix the truck. So what happened, and you know that, they gave all of that milk to the orphan. All of these things that tells us that God is all sufficient if we trust in him. He trusted in a God. So many children that he took care of. So it help, let us to trust in a shepherd that who cares for us. No matter where we find ourselves in, he's able to take care of our needs. In our health, in our relationships, we find grief and loneliness. Regardless of where we are, let's trust in a God who is all caring and compassionate and he will never fail us. Let us go in that faith that he will be there with us no matter where we are. And the great good Lord bless us with these words as we go from this place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia.